All right, good evening, everybody. We're going to be going over our uh, semester exam review sheet. Remember, this is not the semester exam. It is the review sheet for the semester exam. Uh, all of these problems will mirror uh, the semester exam, except the numbers are changed. So it will be the same type of problems, but it will not be the exact problem. But if you can do these, you can do that. Let's begin. Number one. We have uh, the absolute value of 3 plus the absolute value of negative 2. Well, the absolute value of anything is how much it's away from 0 on the number line, which means all of my numbers turn positive. So this is really just 3 plus 2. Uh, that's going to equal 5. Uh, number 2 says we got uh, negative 22 plus negative 10. Well, if we look on the number line, we remember that both of these are headed toward the negative side. Uh, so once I'm at negative 2, then I have to go left again 10 more. So I'm adding these. Uh, two negative numbers, when I combine them, are going to combine to make a bigger negative number. And 22 uh, and 10 make 32. So this is going to be negative 32. Number three, um, we have to remember that a negative times a negative makes a positive. So negative 14 minus a negative 6 is really negative 14 plus 6. Uh, and uh, let's see, negative 14 plus 6 is, well, we have to remember uh, that we take our uh, big number, which is negative 14, subtract our small number, which is 6, it's a positive six now because a negative and negative make a positive. And we'll subtract them since they're opposite signs, which leaves us an eight. But we have to keep the sign of the bigger number. So our answer is going to be negative eight. <clears throat> I evaluate the expression if x is negative two, well, if x is negative two, we'll put it above it. Uh, z is going to be negative four, so we got a minus negative four. And then plus, uh, well, y is 3, so 3. And if we combine these, we see that we've got a, a negative, well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this is really, uh, it all equals negative 2 plus 4 plus 3. Well, let's add all our positives together first. 4 plus 3 is 7. And 7 minus 2 is 5. So all this comes up to 5. Let's go to number 5 now. <clears throat> we got negative 7. Uh, this time we have multiplication going on because we have parentheses next to it. So negative 7 times negative 3. Well, negative times a negative is a positive. And 7 times 3 is 21. So our answer is 21. Uh, this is a division problem. I should have wrote it as a fraction. You've probably seen it more like uh, 30 and uh, divided by negative 6. This would be the exact same problem, but written as a fraction. And anywhere you want to put it, uh, 30, uh, a positive divided by negative is going to equal a negative number. And uh, 30 divided by 6 is 5, so it's going to be negative 5. Evaluate the expression if uh, u equals 4. Well, if u equals 4, that would be 4 squared. And 4 squared is going to be equal to 16. Well, now we've got to bring everything else down. This is multiplying it to negative 3. This is plus 4. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> well, we said that 4 squared was 16. So now we have 16 times negative 3. And then we're going to add 4. <coughs> Well, 16 times a negative 3. Well, negative times a positive is going to be a negative number. So I know that's negative. Um, uh, 16 times 3. Well, I'll work it over here. 16 times 3. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. Uh, 3, that gives me 48. So that's going to be negative 48 
plus four. Well, once again, we have two different sides, so <clears throat> this is going to be uh, the big number, 48, minus the small number, which is four. We're, we're subtracting because they're different signs, and we'll get 44. But we keep the sign of the bigger number, and the bigger number was negative 48, so this is going to equal negative 44. Negative 44 is my answer. All right. Um, which of the following has the greatest value? Well, to do this, remember every fraction is really a division problem. So we'll just get our calculator out here. And we see that we've got uh, five. Well, first of all, let's notice they're all negative signs. And we have to remember when we're dealing with the number line, and we get to negative numbers, uh, just like this is negative one, this is negative two. That means the bigger the number, the less value it has. So let's go ahead and work these. Uh, we got five divided by seven. Well, five divided by seven is going to give us uh, what's about seven one point seven one four. We'll just round it off to the nearest uh, thousands. Okay, uh, the next one is 7 divided by 8. And that's 0.87. More specifically, 0.875. This is a bigger number, so this right now is the least. Oh, wait, they're asking for the greatest value. Almost got that confused. Well, if they're asking for the greatest, that means uh, we want every uh, the number that is most towards zero. So right now, 0.714, since it's a smaller number, is going to be uh, the biggest, uh, the greatest value right now. Let's look at the next one, 11 divided by 15. That's uh, 0.73. And uh, once again, uh, 0.71 has got it. And uh, 7 divided by 10, I don't even need to do that. That's 0.7. I'll uh, prove it in the calculator. 7 divided by 10, 0.7. So since 0.7 is a smaller number than 0.71, uh, D earns our check mark for the greatest value. All right, add, subtract, multiply, or divide, right, in simplest form. Well, uh, let's see. We're adding fractions here. Our denominator is not the same, so what can I do to make them the same? Well, 3 will go into 9, so I have to remember that 3 times 3 is 9. But whatever I multiply to the bottom, I have to multiply to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. So now we have our new fraction, which is 3 over 9, plus 4 over 9. Now we can add our numerator, and we've got 7 over 9. So the answer is 7 over 9, D. Number 10, we got 4 and 2 thirds minus 3 and 1 fourth. Well, let's go ahead and turn these into improper fractions, or first. So we got 4 times 3, that's 12, plus 2, 13, 14. So this is really 14 over 3. And now uh, we've got 3 times 4, that's 12, plus 1, that's 13. So this is really 13 over 4. And now we've got to go ahead and turn these into uh, common denominators. Well, the common denominator uh, between... Uh, let's see that we can the lowest common denominator we can make or is going to be three and uh, 12 three times four but we have to multiply three times four to get 12 and that means we'll have to multiply 14 times four as well <clears throat> uh, 14 times four equals 56 so this is now going to be uh, 56 over 12. 
And now we have to multiply this side by 3 to get 12. Well, 13 times 3, that's no mystery. Uh, remember, this was subtraction here. Uh, that's going to be 39. And 39 over 12. Because 4 times 3 is 12. Now we got our denominators the same. 56 minus 39 is our numerators. So 56 minus 39 will give us, uh, I'll have to borrow one. And that's going to give us 1 and 7. So 17 over 12 will be our answer. But let's turn it into a proper fraction. 17 over 12. Uh, is really 1 and 5 twelfths. Why do you say? Well, every fraction is really a division problem. So this is really 17 divided by 12. And that goes into it once, of course, with a remainder of 5. So it's 1 and 5 over 12. That's what we got here. And 1 and 5 over 12. B. Number 11, we've got multiplication, so is a little easier, but we're going to go ahead and uh, turn them into improper fractions again. 3 times uh, negative 2, that's negative 6, and uh, negative 6 plus 1, that's going to be negative 7 over 3, let's see, uh, times um, 1 half. And now we've got, uh, well, 7 times 1 is 7, and 3 times 2 is 6. So we've got a uh, negative 7 over 6. And that really is going to equal, we know 6 goes into 7 one time. Wait a second, this is 7, yeah, 7 divided by 6 one time. There'll be 1 left over. So this is really negative 1 and 1 6. And look at that, A. Now we've got uh, 12, and they're dividing fractions. Once again, we're going to turn them into improper fractions. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So we've got negative 10 over 3. And this is 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So this is a negative 5 over 2. And now we have to remember we're dividing a fraction by a fraction, and we have to use uh, KCF. That means we're going to uh, keep the first number, change from division to multiplication, and then flip the second number. So let's start out. Uh, K, keep the first number. We're changing from division to multiplication, and we're flipping the second number. So it would be negative 2 over 5. Now, negative times a negative is a positive, so I know my answer is going to be positive. 10 times 2 is 20, and 3 times 5 is 15. And now it's very easy to see that we have, uh, well, 15 goes in there one time. Uh, let's see, with 5 left over, uh, that would be 5 or 15, so that would be 1 third. One and one third should be our answer. Number 13, write and solve a percent proportion to find out what number is 660 percent of 90. Well, remember when we're dealing with percents, we move our decimal back two spaces. One, two. So this is really 6.6. .6. And we multiply it to the number that's there. So times 90. 6.6 .6 times 90 is equal to 594. And D will be our answer. Because they want us to write and solve the percent to find out, uh, write and solve a percent proportion. Uh, Adalia ate lunch and wanted to leave her waitress a 10% tip. Her meal cost $8.95, and there was a 5% tax. Well, first we add up the percents. Uh, we've got 10% plus 
plus 5%. So that means we're going to be dealing with 15%. Once again, when dealing with percents, we move our decimal back two spaces. So this really turns into 0.15. We're going to multiply that to our dinner, which is 8.95. Uh, and uh, let's see, we're going to see what we get here. Now, this is going to give us uh, really just the, because this is asking us for the total cost. So I could go ahead and multiply it by 0.15, but look, look what happens. Uh, 0.15 times 8.95. Really, that's just going to give me how much my dinner uh, is increased by my tax and my tip. So this is just a tax and tip. But watch here. If I put a, a 1 in front of that, now I've included the dinner with it. The dinner is one price for the dinner plus the 15%. So uh, instead of adding this, plus uh, 8.95, 8.95, and I would end up getting uh, 12, what did I do wrong there? Let me go ahead and look at this closely. Um, we got 0 0.15 times 8.95, that's equivalent to a dollar uh, one dollar and thirty-four cents, really. We're going to add this, add it to eight point nine five. I got a feeling I multiplied it before. Ah, uh, there we go. That'll give us approximately uh, ten dollars and twenty-nine cents. Uh, that would be B. But look, if I just went ahead and started with uh, one point one five and multiply that to 8.95, I would have also gotten 10.29 and saved me a little bit of, of addition. All right, Wyatt bought a pair of shoes for $72. Uh, the next week he noticed that the price for the same pair of shoes was $83.50. Okay, for this one we have to find the percent decrease, find the percent of change. And to do this, remember we take the big number minus the small number divided by the original number. So the big number was 83.50. We're going to minus the small number, which is 72, and then we're going to divide it by the original number. Well, the original number was uh, why it bought a pair of shoes for uh, $72. The next week, you notice the price for the same shoes was now that. So that means the original price was 72. All right, let's do the math. If I do this, I see I've got $83.50. I'm going to minus $72. And then I'm going to divide it by $72. And that comes up to, um, looks like 1597. 1597. One, five, nine, seven, and that was with the decimal. They want us to find the percent. And remember, whenever we're dealing with percent, we move our decimal back. And if we're turning it to a percent, we need to move our decimal forward. So right now I've got 15%.97. Uh, if I round it up, really, that gives me 16%. And C would be our answer. The radio is on sale for $40.50. If this price represents 10% of the discount from the original price, what is the original price? Wow. Okay. Uh, they're saying it's on sale, and they want to know if the price represent if this price represents a 10% discount. Mm. Well, what that means is <clears throat> they want to know if we increase it by 10%, what would the price be, right? Uh, so let's try that. Looks like I accidentally cut my calculator out of there. Um, so if we have a 40.50, point 
five zero and we times it by remember when we're dealing with a percent we move our decimal back to spaces so this is going to be uh, point 0.1 times point 0.1 is going to be four dollars and five cents and so what was the original price though so we got to add that uh, to what we have here so we have to add it to right because it's on sale now add it to 40 point five zero and that would give us forty four dollars and uh, fifty five cents let's see I don't got that anywhere here um, I'm thinking I might have to try this a different way uh, ten percent from the original price well let's try using the original price on each of these and reducing it that might be the better way to go here uh, so if I did that you know this kind of already tells me if it's a discount price and the original price has to be bigger than this that means it has to be A or B so I'm gonna I guess right now it's B but let's try this let's try 55.56 and we're gonna multiply it uh, Let's see, we need a 10% discount times 0 0.10, and that's $5.50. Uh, okay, so we're going to subtract that from $55.56. All right, and if we did that, 5.56 5, and we were to go ahead and subtract 5 five six all right that's yeah five five point five five okay that's gonna give us uh, one zero uh, that's 50 but as we can see that's not gonna go ahead and be 40 50 so let's get rid of this one and let's try B then um, if I do B that means I got to take forty five dollars and multiply it to 0 0.10. That's going to be four dollars and fifty cents. So if I take, um, let's see, if I take 4.50, that's got to be yeah, that's got to be it. Because if I was to take forty-five dollars and minus 4.50 from it. That is going to leave me with zero to borrow one, so that'll be four, and this would be ten, so that would be five. Ah, there we go. Zero and four, four, forty, fifty. That's exactly the number that I have up here. So B is our right answer. Seventeen says find the simple interest for three thousand nine hundred dollars at three percent five years. This one's pretty easy. We simply take our, our amount, we multiply it by on the number of years, and we multiply that by uh, our percent after we move our decimal over to places. So we've got uh, 3,900 times 0 0.03 times 5. And that'll give us our answer. So 3,900 times 0 0.03 times 5, and that's going to equal 585. And there we go. The unit rate after 3.5 hours, Chasha has traveled 210 miles. She travels at a constant speed. How many miles would she have traveled after 9 hours? Well, to do this, we need to find out what one is, don't we? So we're going to go ahead and find out what one hour will be. So we're going to divide 210 by 3.5. Now, we could do it that way, or we could also go ahead and realize if this is hours, then we will put nine over here. And we could also cross product and find our answer as well. And this simply means that I would have, I know that 210 
times 9 has to be equal to 3.5t. So uh, let's try that. We got uh, 210 times 9. And that's going to equal 1,890. 1,890. And that has to equal 33.5t. Well, we know we have to divide 3.5 away from t to get t by itself. And whatever I do to one side, I'll do to the other. So now we have our division problem. And that is 1,890 divided by 3.5. And that answer is 540. And since we're talking about miles, it would be miles. All right, what is the solution of this proportion? Well, we just did one just like this a second ago, didn't we? Now, uh, we could have gone by rates over here and, and divided 210 by 3.5 and then uh, multiplied it to 9, but we went that route. So let's just do the same thing over here. We know that uh, 3 times 24 is going to be equal to 16m. Well, 3 times 24, that's 72. So this is 72 equals 16n. And we'll divide 16 away from both sides. So 72 divided by 16 gives us 4.5. Uh, so that the solution to this proportion, n equals 4.5. All right, what is the slope of the line that passes through these points? Mm. Well, to know this, we must be familiar with our equation. Uh, and our equation is y2 minus y1 is divided by x2 minus x1. Well, y2, uh, let's see. Well, let's identify what's going to be my 2s and my 1. This will be my 1s. These will be my 2s. I know that my coordinates are always x and y, x and y. So um, let's see if I did that. That means, well, here, let's try this for a second. E will be 1. F will be 2. And this is going to be x and this is y. This is going to be x and this is y. So now we can see very easily that y2, y number 2 is negative 6. So that's negative 6 minus y1. y1 is negative 4, so minus negative 4. And that's going to be divided by x2. Well, x2 is 2. And that's going to be minusing x1, which was negative 1. So minus negative 1. Well, we got negative times a negative, and that's a positive. So now we got negative 6 plus 4. Over, well, negative times a negative is a positive, so that's 2 plus 1. Well, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So our answer is negative 2 over 3. And here we are, B. 21. The table shows the cost for ordering a certain number of tacos. What is the value of Y if the cost varies directly to the number of tacos ordered? Well, if we do this, we know uh, 2.4 divided by 2 is going to be 1.2. 3.6 divided by 3 is going to be 1.2. 4.8 divided by 4 is going to be 1.2. So that means we can just multiply 1.2 to 6 and get our answer. Uh, 1.2 times 6 is equal to 7.2. So y 
will equal 7.2. But since they're talking about money, it's going to be $7.20. All right, the graph shows the amount of uh, pages Amy reads each hour. Select all the statements that are true. The graph shows a direct variation. Well, this is a direct variation. Everything's going upward to a positive angle. So that is true. Then it says the graph shows no direct variation. Well, that's obviously not true because uh, no variation would be it. It's all over the place. It doesn't go in, uh, down, doesn't go up, doesn't go straight. Uh, it just goes everywhere. And that's not true. The next one says it's a constant of 50 pages an hour. Well, every hour, as we can see, is 50 pages. So that's true. The line is straight and passes through the origin. Well, it is a straight line and passes through the origin. So A, C, and D are correct. Number 23, write each expression in simplest form. Well, we just need to combine like terms here. 19 plus 4 are like terms because they're both numbers. And then uh, 11n plus minus 16n are also like terms. So uh, 9 plus 4, that's going to give me 23. Uh, and then positive 11 minus 16, well, 16 is a bigger number, so it's going to be a negative. And 16 minus 11 is 5, so it's going to be a negative 5n. So uh, 23 minus 5n. Number 24, uh, this is, uh, we're subtracting linear expressions. So we've got uh, 12x plus 17, and we're just going to take this number here and put it underneath, but we're subtracting it uh, or minusing it. So all these numbers, since they're going to, uh, on the outside of the parentheses, are going to be multiplied to a negative, uh, and we could just pretend there's one in front, so it's negative 1. Well, negative 1 times negative 20 is going to be a positive 20x. And a negative 1 times a positive 20 is going to be a negative 20. And let's go ahead and work these now. 17 minus 20, well, that's negative 3. And uh, 12 plus 20, well, that's 32x. So 32x minus 3 would be our answer. Next, it says factor. That means we've got to find out what, uh, what is inside each of these. And if we do, we can say uh, we can break down 36x by saying it is, uh, let's see, uh, 6 times 6. Uh, 6 times 6 is really, uh, well, 6 can be 3 times 2, and uh, that means 3 times 2 again. And then we have uh, x times x. Uh, so 36x equals 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times x. Uh, then it says uh, 6y. So 6y is really just going to be 3 times 2y. Well, uh, we see that we have 3 in common, and we also have a 2 in common. That leaves us, um, let's see, uh, 3 times 2 is 6. That means our greatest common factor is going to be 6. Uh, what's left over on the top now? 3 times 2 is 6 times x. That means 6x will go here. And y is left over here, and it was a negative 6y, so it would be negative y. So our answer would be 6 uh, times 6x minus y. 6 times 6x minus y, b. Uh, use, the pro use the properties of equality to solve each equation. Well, if I was to go ahead and solve this, I'd have to realize that I want a by itself. To do that, I have to multiply this to its uh, reciprocal, which is 5 over 4, right? Because if I multiply 4 over 5 to 5 over 4, then they cancel each other out. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side. So I'm going to have to multiply this to 5 over 4. 
Now, 3 times 5, that is going to be 15. And 7 times 4, that's going to be 28. And 15 over 28, I believe, is going to be our answer. Uh, yeah, I don't see reducing that. 15 over 28. Uh, next, we have 27. 27 is uh, 2C minus 24 equals negative 30. Well, first, let's get rid of the 24 by introducing it to positive 24. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. And now I have 2C, 24 minus 24 is 0, so I'm not going to do nothing with that. And then negative 30 plus 24 is negative 6. Now I have to see how many times 2 goes into negative 6. Well, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So C is equal to negative 3. Uh, number 28. Uh, I'm going to have you guys skip this because I did not teach it. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what these little telephones are supposed to mean. So we're just going to eliminate number 28 altogether. 29. The length of each side of a square garden is increased by 2 feet so that the perimeter of the garden is now 48 feet. Well, we know the perimeter has to equal 48. We also know since it's a square, there's four sides to a square. And each side, they said, each side of the square of the garden is increased by two feet. So I don't know what it was, but it was increased by two. And since there were four sides, I can multiply that to four. Now I have my equation. Uh, I can divide by four to get rid of my 4. Whatever I divide from one side, I have to divide from the other. And 48 divided by 4 is 12. So now I have x plus 2 is equal to 12. Uh, now I have to subtract 2 from this side to get x alone, which means I subtract 2 from this side. Uh, and I get x is equal to 10. So x is 10. All right, and the last one is 30. Uh, once again, this is really a two-step inequality equation. I'm going to add 6 to this side to get rid of it, which means I'll add 6 over here. 22 plus 6 is going to be uh, negative 16. So now I have negative 16 is bigger than negative 4q. See, this turned to 0, so I didn't put it over here. 4q carried over. The signs stay the same, and negative 22 minus 6 is negative 16. Now I have to see how many times a negative 4 uh, goes into negative 16. But before I even start that, I have to remember, the minute I divided by a negative number, my sign has to change. Well, four, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, so I have Q by itself now. Negative 16 divided by negative 4, uh, negative divided by negative is a positive, and 16 divided by 4, that's 4. So I know 4 is less than Q, so Q is bigger than 4. So I look at these and I see that 4 is over here, since Q is bigger, D is my answer. All right, that was all of your review. Hope it helps you prepare for the test, and uh, good luck.